Hi everybody. Today we are doing the three week litter update for this litter of large mini Australian Labradoodle puppies. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Nuys Labradoodles and today we are taking a look at the High Hopes litter of Labradoodle puppies. And these puppies are all going to be large medium Labradoodles when they mature. And today we're going to go through each of the puppies in their birth order, tell you a little bit about them, their weight gain, what the litter's being doing overall for the past week and also give you a little bit of info about Mama Labradoodle Hazel. So Hazel is our beautiful chocolate sable Labradoodle puppy and she is a mini. And the sire of this litter is Tatlow and Tatlow is a dilute chocolate tuxedo and he is a um, very large mini. He's not quite big enough to be a medium but he's definitely a large mini. So together these two are going to have puppies that range in the mini size. I don't think anybody is going to qualify as a medium although you never know until they're matured. Uh, the, the, certainly the two biggest puppies may make it to the small medium mark. So we're going to start with the puppies now and we'll go through each of them in birth order and Red Collar Girl is the puppy that we have right now and she is the firstborn in this litter and she's also the biggest puppy in this litter. And you can see while she's sitting down here, right around here just on the, her, the top of her back, her coat is starting to lift. And this is when we see the coat starting to not be straight as it is here and what it's like when the Labradoodle puppies are born, but what it's going to be like as an adult Labradoodle when they have the beautiful full fluffy coat which is so nice to see and what everybody really likes about the look of a Labradoodle puppy. And this is also where um, the waves in the coat will come in. Both Tatlow and Hazel have a fairly nice wavy coat so the puppies will likely all have waves as well. We might get some curls in there but mostly we're going to have a, a wavier coat. So Miss Red Collar Girl, she's just doing great. Now the litter's big excitement for this week is all of them have their ears open. So now they can hear and see what's going on in the world. So it's a lot of stimulation in the past week that's happened for them. So they come from a world where there's no sound and it's perfectly dark and in three weeks time they can hear and see. So it's quite a lot of stimulus that happens in such a short period of time. And Miss Red Collar Girl is this beautiful, beautiful uh, sort of mahogany chocolate color. She has gorgeous highlights in her coat that really show off nicely. And then she has a little white smidge on her chest as well as a couple of the dip toes there on the back. So this little girl is the biggest, but she's not pushy or bossy at this point in time. Uh, right now, all of the litter is quite similar in terms of their temperament. They all get along nicely. No big, huge standouts for many of them as to one who's very talkative or one who's bossy or one who's very quiet. They're all very similar, which is really nice to see. Consistency in look, size, and temperament, of course, is what we're always aiming for with our puppies. Right, sweetheart? Yes. She's quite fond of being picked up. They're all used to having things done every day as we've shown you before where we put them upside down on their backs and give them a little tummy rub and things like that. So now we have also moved them all into the doodle den so they can hear uh, all the other puppies, smell all the other moms and we also have started the noise desensitization with the puppies so they hear various things throughout the day and they listen to lots of sports and to music on the TV as well. So that's our pretty little red collar girl. Next we have our only guy in the litter and that is appropriately our blue collar puppy. Hello sweet angel. And before I pick him up you can see that he too in the same area as red collar his coat is lifting here around his neck as well. And while he's down here you can also see that his color is darker than red colors, uh, red collars rather. He is more of a chocolate kind of um, uh, brown color like his mama. Hazel is. So Labradoodles have a variety of colors and patterns which is part of what makes them so much fun and one of the colors that has many different hues to it is brown. So we see all sorts of different shades in these puppies in this litter because Mama Labradoodle Hazel is a dark chocolate and even now that she's older her she has held that color really nicely. She hasn't faded at all which is quite common with with chocolate. And then Papa Labradoodle 
labradoodle tatlow is a dilute which means it's he's more milky in his shade and that is intentional that's not from fading that is from an allele the d allele where he is a dilute color so Mr. Blue here, our only guy in a litter of all women, he's just a sweetie pie. Very easy going. He's got this really pretty little bit of white on his chest here. He doesn't feel like being picked up right now, so we'll let him go back down and explore. And uh, he's uh, just right in the middle of the pack. Like I said, the temperament in this litter is right now completely consistent. They're all very much the, the same. No big difference in any of them. Nobody's scared of anything uh, at this point in time, and nobody makes a great big racket at all. In fact, the noisiest one out of the whole group is Hazel. Hazel is a very devoted mom. She's very similar to Gigi, and they are related. Hazel is Gigi's aunt. And uh, that line of ours, the moms are extremely devoted to their puppies. So Hazel does not like being away from her puppies for too long. She doesn't like things going on without her being in with them to make sure everything's going well. However, she's not as tidy a housekeeper as Gigi is. So uh, quite often in this litter's area, everything's all higgledy-piggledy. They take their blankets and they mix them up and they take their pee pads and move them around. Um, and sometimes they even have a bare spot on the floor. Uh, we try to keep everything covered all the time, but sometimes when they kick things around, then we find some bare spots here and there. So Hazel likes to come in and attend to that whenever she sees that happening. So that's our little guy from the litter, Mr. Blue Collar. Next is Pink Collar Girl. And here is Pink Collar Girl. And Mr. Blue Collar, by the way, is 1.19 kilograms. So he is one of the smaller puppies. Miss Pink Collar Girl. Now you can see her color is completely different. So she is pretty much a mini tatlow, just in female form. She is a tuxedo, and we'll do that in just a minute when we turn her around. And she also has the dilute chocolate coat. So she has a much lighter coat, and I suspect that this will uh, lighten up even more before it's time for her to go home. And then we turn her around, and you can see that beautiful tuxedo pattern. So the tuxedo is right around the face up over the head she has the white around her collar here big strong white bib and white up all four legs the white socks and she also has a very pretty little white spot at the end of her tail and that's all part of um, it's called Irish spotting is where a tuxedo comes from and many different breeds have different terminologies for these colors and patterns so you could have a labradoodle who might be referred to as a dilute chocolate and in a different breed it would have a different name altogether uh, there are many different terms for different colors Isabella fawn all sorts of things and it's just really which breed you're looking at just like in caramels for labradoodles your caramel if you are caramel colored and have a brown nose but if you have a black nose then you're an apricot yeah that's right isn't it now this little monkey girl oh she's very friendly she is she is probably the most confident out of all the puppies in the litter although like i said they're all fairly even in their temperaments but she has always had quite a nice outgoing temperament she's really fun she loves affection. Uh, she's very, very uh, keen to come and meet everybody. And uh, let's get on with it. She's a bit of a life of the party girl. And Pink Collar Girl is 1.25 kilograms. So she's the second largest in the litter, just uh, a smidge smaller than, than Red Collar is. It's a very nice little dog. Does really well when we do all of our various things with her. And she already has developed a real keen appreciation for the tummy rub. Yes, and she was the one whose ears opened the first. At least the one that we observed had her, their ears open first. So that's our pink collar girl. Next we have purple collar girl. Hi, Burpy. Hi, oh, and you can hear some talking in the background there. I believe that's red collar girl who's having a little bit of a conversation. <laughs> she, she sometimes sounds like a bit of a cat with a brrrr 
dark kind of sound. Purple Collar Girl is again back to the very dark chocolate color. So she is much more uh, like what Hazel is. And you can see she too has her coat lifting around the back of her neck there. And when we were looking at Pink Collar, Pink Collar's coat hasn't lifted at all yet. Uh, so I, this one is just coming along slowly. And Perpy is one of the smaller girls. She's 1.10 kilograms. She is a beautifully built dog. I really like the way she's put together. She's very close to the breed standard in terms of being a square dog, nice and solid, a nice blocky build. She has a beautiful head, very, very um, broad head, high set ears, good strong stop and a short nose. So she meets the breed standard very nicely. And then she has that, oh, she's just a tiny little smidge of white there on her chest and that's it she doesn't have any other white whatsoever so she really is marked pretty much exactly the same as her mama hazel is marked and she has some gorgeous highlights in her coat really really pretty color she has an adorable little face her expression is just the cutest she just has that natural little dolly look to her this is a very pretty puppy aren't you and so that's our purple collar girl and last but not least is our little yellow collar girl and she is the tiniest in the litter. This little girl was very small when she was first born. I think her original birth weight was, let's do a check here. She was only 176 grams when she was first born. So, so, so she was very tiny. Um, and now she's up to 869 grams. So significantly smaller than red collar girl, the largest at 1.36 uh, kilograms. But she's doing beautifully. You can see that she's lovely and filled out. She's certainly not tiny anymore. Uh, she's just a smaller stature. And you can see her coat again is slightly different. She's not as dark as a uh, purple collar girl is at all or red collar girl but she's not um, the milk chocolate color that pink collar girl is sort of in between the two and you can see she's got a little bit of coat lifting here around her neck. Do you want to come and say hi to all the people? You show them your beautiful little self? Here we go. This little girl has a very sweet disposition. Out of everybody, if you had to really nitpick about it, she's probably the quieter of the puppies. Um, and part of that is just because she started off smaller and being smaller, she would get pushed around a bit initially. Now we don't have to do anything to watch out for her. She's quite able to hold her own. And she has, I think, no white on her at all. Do you? No, she's a solid. So she's the only one with no white whatsoever. And I guess she's going to be camera shy today. There, you're going to look at the camera. She has a very similar face to purple. That really cute little expression with a nice broad head, strong stop, and the short nose, and the high ear set. But she doesn't seem to want to look at the camera today. Something over there must be very fun to look at. She's doing great, though. She's a really nice little girl. She's coped very well with being significantly smaller than everybody. And really, she did that all independently. We really did not have to assist her. So she is going to be, I would think, probably pretty close to or at the one kilogram mark when we do next week's four week update. Now these kids at three weeks old have not started eating solid food yet. They're still all nursing from Hazel for all of their meals. But we will probably mid-week, end of week, let them tell us. If they're looking around like they're hungry, if Hazel's starting to tell us like, oh, I'm getting a bit tired of feeding all these kids and can't keep up, then we'll introduce them to some solid food. And what we do to introduce them to solid food is we make up a little mix of goat's milk, pablum, and pumpkin. The pumpkin goes in to help them make that transition without having any digestive issues. The pablum is there because it's very easy for them to process in their system. And the goat's milk is the closest to uh, mama dog milk that you can have. So we put the three together. We try to make it so it's a fairly thick mixture because it's uh, not a uh, something that the puppies know right away how to do which is to lap the food up so by making it thick it's easier for them to catch on that oh if I put my tongue in this dish something attaches to it and well it tastes pretty good usually they end up wearing most of it now if you're a subscriber to our YouTube channel then you'll have seen our video updates for our other Labradoodle litters and the litters that 
about are four weeks old and eating solid food, you'll have seen in their last video updates that they are, are a big sticky mess. Well, it's really great for helping them lap up things and helping them learn to eat. It also makes quite a mess of the puppies as they walk all through it and follow all over it and make a great big mess. And you can see the little uh, yellow collar girl is licking me and trying to see if I've got anything available here for her to eat. So we'll put them all back in with Hazel now so they can go and have their lunch and get their tummies filled up. So thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please just feel free to put them below here. I'm happy to talk about anything to do with Labradoodles with you. And uh, give us a thumbs up if you have a minute. And we hope you are subscribed so that you do see all of our other video updates. We try to include a little bit of information in each one that's different so that uh, you always have a chance to learn a little bit more about Labradoodles, my favorite subject. Thanks for watching.